Hi everyone, The Lone Wolf here. Welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. And well, there's quite a bit of salt mining that's been going on in the last few days because CCP announced that they were once again going to nerf the Rorcal and that they're going to put the mining anomalies on a timer, uh, which uh, five hours for the uh, largest anomaly is uh, is quite, um, quite severe, uh, quite a big change. Now, um, if it's done for saving the economy, which is what CCP says, then this is sort of understandable. Um, but I can I can definitely understand a lot of the criticism uh, from players that uh, that uh, are complaining uh, because well a lot of people saw this coming and from that perspective it was just a very rash decision from CCP to buff the roar call uh, at first to such incredible heights uh, and now to have to tone everything back down because of course it is. Uh, possibly completely breaking the economy. So let's get started here on the markets and uh, keep that information on the back of our minds. And uh, let's see what Plex have been doing. That's going to be at 120. There we go. And they're down a little bit. So here is the chart we can see. Well, it's been a long time, but we actually see the five day moving average crossing the 20 day moving average, median daily prices going down substantially, volumes up as well. So this does look like there's a decent amount of dumping happening. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there could also be some plex sales going on at the moment. Uh, I don't follow that up too closely because uh, I don't really buy Plex. I pay my subscription and that's really it. Uh, but um, it's definitely a, a, a serious pullback here from Plex that seems to be in the works. So 2,630,000 ISK for a Plex on the sellers and 2,550,000 for the buyers. And this is in Gita. So let's uh, do away with the filters from uh, last week's episode. Uh, very uh, correct comments that a lot, uh, if not most uh, of these, um, or if not all of these buy orders in like Perimeter and Morrissey in a player owned trade hubs uh, have like a one jump range. Um, and uh, this is because they pay uh, lower taxes on putting up that buy order. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense and we should definitely do if talk from now on with uh, certainly for the buyers we keep the filter off so that uh, so that we can also see the buy orders like one jump out it's not going to be absolutely perfect and i don't want to set the filter to one jump uh, because um yeah I do a lot of business within Gita itself and, and, and that filter, I'm using it personally as well uh, on, my, uh, on my main account uh, or on my main character, it's on this account. And so I'm not going to change the filter, which I could do to one jump to make a lot of sense. So it's not going to be perfect. You will also have like borrowers three jumps out, uh, but for the buyers definitely makes sense to keep the filter up. For the sellers though, uh, we saw that sometimes there were really strange stuff like 10 jumps out in low sec. That doesn't make that much sense to keep that filter up for everything. But for the Plex stuff, we are going to keep this filter up because as you can see here from the Morrissey and Perimeter sales here, they're large volumes, there's a lot of them and they are uh, quite, uh, quite lower. Uh, then uh, quite a bit lower than, than in Gita itself. So there is this uh, Plex related market that does exist in these player owned structures. So here we can see that Plex are down to 2,590,000 ISK on the seller side and for the buyers 2,552, very well, pretty, pretty narrow margin here. And so Plex is going down a little bit. I think good news for people that are looking to Plex their accounts because these were very high prices that we were having uh, before. Next up, the large skill injectors. So strangely enough, it's one cell order in station that goes for 756.7 million is that is the cheapest one. But then you do see that there is still substantial number of sellers and in volumes as well uh, that that exist as well for the large skill injectors. Also, oh, all of this is really uh, Okay, in, in a completely strange order now because of all of the change that CCP has done here, but I'll, I'll go from, actually we'll just jump to skill extractors. So skill extractors, let's look at those here. Of course, mirroring Plex very closely, we can see the sharp drop off in price here on the chart. 
going for 290 million ISK on the seller side of things. Again, decent amount of uh, trade happening in Morrissey, some in perimeter as well. The buyers are at 285 million ISK, so that's a very narrow margin right here. And uh, down in price following the Plex prices. Next up, we'll do the uh, large skill injectors. So historically, we know that the skill extractor goes into uh, becomes a large skill injector. Those are still going up in price, one year high. So it could be that we're lagging behind a little bit, but we're paying 756 million ISK for a skill in large skill injector and the bars are at 746 million so uh, this is probably a bit of a delayed response because of the introduction of the small skill injectors but personally i would expect this to not last and we might actually start to see a pullback as well as skill extractors start to go down in price so this is this is probably the right time to still try to sell some large skill injectors at a one year high price right here and uh, then for the small skill injectors these are of course new so the chart looks a little bit weird but we can see that those are taking off as well uh, currently being sold for 154 million bars going to 149 million here again four jumps out so this is a little bit weird from time to time but uh, okay general picture in the plex related markets plex are pulling back down substantially uh, it's also showing up in the skill extractors it looks like it's going to be a little bit delayed uh, for the skill injectors uh, for those to start pulling back but my personal expectation is that that will happen multiple pilot training certificates of course right next to plex going back down as well look at the large increase here in volumes uh, which is quite unusual for um, for this item it was a much smaller market before but i think some people are doing that conversion a little bit more all of a sudden and these are currently selling for 1 billion 370 million is so still quite a bit more expensive than like 1.2 billion which was plex let's say at around the ascension expansion and then finally, we've got the pilot body rescout, really tiny, tiny market that's basically moving sideways here. I should probably delete that. I don't think there's much interest to keep this up. Someday CCP might introduce something uh, that, uh, that could be uh, related to our uh, player avatars, not just our ships, but uh, I don't think that that's on the horizon right now. So for now, let's maybe remove it. Yeah. It's really such a tiny market, it's, it's really not worth it to keep an eye on that for now. Uh, if something happens and all of a sudden it would be interesting to add it, I will do this of course. So next up, we are going to move on to some minerals. So we'll take Tritanium um, 750. There we go. And we will put this filter back on for the sellers. So the reason for that is you can see here, eight jumps out. 100,000 units, not worth it. Nine jumps out, six jumps out. All of that is not really worth it to keep an eye on that. This is why we want to see 1.2 billion, 2 billion units. So a lot of um, a lot of dumping happening right here. You can see that the price was actually going back up a little bit towards 4.8. Uh, but now here we're actually seeing some massive dumping. Still, sellers are at 487, uh, buyers are at 470. So again, this one weird buy order. I'm gonna try and do it like this as requested by you guys but if i don't like it i am going to switch this back because <laughs> uh, right here these buy orders they, there are some right here in perimeter you can see the green ones uh, that are uh, apparently those that i can sell to so that is good information but it's definitely not a great picture when it comes here for tritanium there are buyers that are uh, quite far away that are showing up here yeah, a little bit annoying uh, but we can see 469 for the buyers so we're up a little bit from last week but looks like we're already on our way down this could get stalled though because of course of the changes to uh, the uh, Rorcal drones um, the excavators and the respawn timer to the anomalies still from the forum post uh, it was um, we could read that CCP does not expect this to impact most NALSEC miners only in the very busiest systems will they have to uh, slow down maybe spread out a little bit that is at least their aim so let's take a look at pyrite next here was also moving up quite a little bit here all of a sudden back towards six is that's quite nice pulling back a little bit but holding above the 20 day moving average line which i would say is actually not bad 571 for the sellers 556 for the buyers and that is in morrissey 5 million units not really that big of an order but 
um, when it comes to the volumes here I would say that uh, let's see here is this the last 24 hours no it's not yeah supply unfortunately still has the edge here with 56 million units coming in 17 million units coming in here uh, driving the price still a lower um, not great for high miners to see something like this but uh, this is of course the picture CCP is trying to balance out making the Rorcal the best mining ship which is also extremely expensive as well and not completely destroying the mineral market, the mineral economy uh, in EVA line. It's quite a difficult balancing act personally. I feel like they made a big mistake simply making the Rorcal the very best miner in yield period. They should have probably done something a little bit different when it comes to uh, making the Rorcal uh, more interesting. But yeah, we'll have to see how all of this plays out, of course. Next up, we have uh, the Mixalon market. Nice little uh, pullback here at the tail end. So it was pretty much inevitable as the one high mineral that was the bottleneck in Nulsic had a really high price, 80 ISK. Um, even years back was a really good price for Mexalon. It was constantly pulling back because of course if you're mining anything at the moment in Isaac you're focusing on Mexalon. but here at the tail end we have this little jump back up which may be a turnaround and it's at 72 isk apparently 72 16 for the sellers buyer are at 71 isk so this is a very respectable price for Mexalon. if you can still focus your mining on anything it would be this because it is going to uh, make up a lot for what's happening with tritanium with pyrite and with isogen which uh, we'll look at next year also a little bit of a pullback quite interesting so some investments were made because this is on a massive quantity boost right here that uh, isogen is jumping back up a little bit so we were going down towards uh, so that's just the order numbers can i nope apparently can't really grab that one uh we're up to 51.5 is for the sellers 49.26 for the buyers of course when the price goes up there are people ready to dump as well with uh probably massive stocks that are still uh, hanging around in people's inventories so 50 million here 50 million here another 60 million right here compared to the buyers 3.7 million 11 million 23 million uh, supply is winning out this increase in price is not going to last very long but at least it's a sign that the economy is somewhat responsive uh, when it comes to ccp changes all of this of course has to play out in the long term next up here we've got uh, noxium also trying a little bit of a pull back up but as you can see here at the tail end on the median daily prices it's already going back down uh, sellers are at 356 isk the bars are at 351.23 isk so a very narrow margin here the bad news here again 12 million 7 uh, 5.7 million 5.7 million compared to the buyers 1.7 million um, you really have to go down quite a bit lower quite a bit lower here to find 30 million is at 283 so it's it's still not good news uh, oversupply is still the name of the game which is probably going to last for quite a while even if ccp ends up completely nerfing uh, the uh, the nasic mining potential for these uh, high sick minerals um, it is st they still have such massive stocks uh, that they have uh, mined already that all of this is going to be very delayed in response and uh, so this chart is bound to still stay uh, quite low and, and quite tricky for high-sec miners. Again, Mixlon is the one um, the one mineral that you should focus on if you are mining in EVE Online at the moment outside of Nolsec. And um, for the other ones, we'll need patience. We'll need to see what CCP does with uh, the mining problems that they're perceiving at the moment and how everything is going to play out. So the impact on Nolsec minerals that seems to have been um, well, actually, again, we do see a, a jump up here. And I think from this, you see it here. This was before I read anything about these changes. So for Zytrine, you can see it a little bit in uh, Mexalon as well, which was one, two, three, yeah, like four or five days ago. Uh, I can understand the speculation on some sort of a leak, uh, but really the fact that we're already pulling back down so heavily here all of a sudden, in my opinion, means that this may have been more of a speculative dump that happened here or, or a massive e uh, buy that happened here, which let's be honest here as well, 950, 952, 
this is a trigger point that we've seen before so i would not be surprised uh, that um, some people see the side line jump like a week before uh, the changes to mining are announced again and see uh, like a leak or something like that in there but what i'm seeing here is that we have the same bottom price here uh, 950 950 here it takes off it's it went even lower on, on quite a bit more momentum as well but here again <clears throat> and this is this is clearly a bottom point that the market um, reaches and then it triggers for some investors to buy up a lot of side drives. so i actually think that this could be a natural bit of a response and we can already see at the tail end that we're going back down so side drive is currently selling for 1035 isk the buyers are at 1000 isk so they have been forced up a little bit again you do see here that um, the sellers come in in the millions the buyers not so much and so well there are here a million here a million here is this in the last 24 hours we have to go back down and, and quite a bit older to find these so it's maybe a little bit more balanced than in the Isaac minerals uh, so this could slow down at around a thousand isk but i'm not seeing this as as a leak per se this is a a natural response of Zydrine reaching 950 that some investors take the leap and actually buy up a lot of that so yeah this actually seems normal to me and here again we are slightly oversupplied it's not as bad as with the others and so at the moment the price is already pulling back uh, next up we've got Megasite for Nullsec uh, so this was a massive dump that caused the price to crash and now here we're starting to move sideways at around 1180 volumes pretty much regular maybe a little bit lower than normal so nothing really to spot here and uh, 1177 is for the sellers 1151 for the buyers um, yeah and here in new caldari you've got this strange sell order that is messing everything up man We'll have to get used to this. We'll we'll give it a good try to uh, to work with the filters here. But uh, mega side basically moving sideways, which is another sign, in my opinion, that there have not really been any leaks when it comes to the new nerfs to mining, uh, because you would have seen this move as well, in my opinion. And then finally, we have more fight for the minerals actually going up a little bit. That's quite interesting on high volumes as well. But this is like uh, right at the announced changes of the mineral market. So this is actually a normal response, I think. We went pretty low here. Uh, that's pretty obvious. But currently, 9,700 is for the sellers, 9,200 is for the buyers. Still below 10,000 is so this is actually still decently cheap and affordable more fight and here once again we're up in price a little bit um and 123,000, 100,000 here and it's actually more balanced once again when it comes to sellers and the buyers so uh, my read on this uh, whether it's on speculation which i think it is um or on a leak uh, we did have a bit of a jump up in prices on a lot of the minerals most of them are already pulling back when it comes to high stick minerals we're clearly in an oversupplied situation again massive stocks are being dumped at any opportunity when it comes to the nosic minerals it's a bit more balanced and so i think that there's a good chance that these will start to move sideways once again like before at around the those uh, previous price ranges maybe a little bit higher but as i said i think that there's going to be a lot of inertia in the mineral market because of the massive stocks of minerals that people still have lying around from the massive mining sessions that they've been holding next up we're moving on to some pi 1840 there we go and let's take a look at this so i think the general picture was that we had a very strong summer we also had a very uh, strong march april that was in general some of them were going really high especially those related to fuel blocks but in the last few weeks we were pulling back substantially and here now we can see that construction blocks are basically stabilizing at 12,500 isk which is i would say an average price for them 12,700 for the sellers 12,000 for the buyers pretty much an average price definitely looks like we've cooled down but we're not in buy order territory just yet consumer electronics next oh that's quite interesting actually taking off again so here again you have the decently strong summer ascension expansion march april doing quite nicely we were pulling back towards an average maybe for consumer electronics 12k something like that but look at that here uh, quite unusual moving back up all of a sudden 17,000 for the sellers 15,900 for the buyers uh, consumer electronics if you can produce these it's a great time to sell them triple spike here 
tr uh, this is three times that we're going for that one year high on consumer electronics and uh, this one comes out of the blue a little bit next up we've got the coolants here again we have this pattern decently good summer september uh spiking up a little bit then a little bit early than the rest february we have a one year high a bit of a pullback at the end but at the moment i would say we're on average 12,200 for the sellers 11,200 for the buyers this is for coolants something that's very common easily made on gas plants i think it's actually an average price so i would i would say it's okay to sell if you want to start building up stocks i would understand that as well enriched uranium next uh trying to pull back but not reaching the uh the previous uh, averages i would say uh so this is still selling for 16,000 isk bars at 14,500. that's a pretty wide margin you can see that there is some pressure on the price but it is still well above average for enriched uranium mechanical parts next this one uh, was a bit more unusual because it didn't have the strong summer but then it basically had this increase in price over eight nine months up to april where it peaked and now we're uh, going back down um, still mechanical parts again very common very easy to make i would dare to put that average at maybe 10,000 to 11,000 is currently selling for 11,800 still buying for 11,000 a little bit above average not buy much anymore so here again mechanical parts it's okay to sell um, if you want to start building stocks I think you're a little bit early I, I, I would still sell above average right now uh, but I could understand it the pullback has been quite serious and this is very unusual um, com compared especially here to consumer electronics you can see the sell and the buy opportunities that show up on a one-year chart here for mechanical parts basically a one-year run up to April and now here the pullback this is basically a one-time deal you can buy for less than 9,000 is like uh, almost nine months ago you had one sell opportunity in march april now you have to pull back again waiting for the response i think the future here could be quite interesting uh, for mechanical parts because pi has been decently volatile we've seen a lot of highs and lows and uh, seeing mechanical parts move um, in its own little fashion uh, means that I, I think we'll have to keep an eye on this and see if there is a pattern that will start to emerge from this or not oxygen next still trading very low coming off of a really low point of course so up a little bit but still you can see on the 20 day moving average that we're well below average so 408 is for the sellers 370 for the buyers uh, personally you know if you're looking to invest a little bit of isk then then go for those buy orders don't go completely crazy but um, at the moment i would say oxygen is trading below average robotics next that was a very interesting one as well here again you can see a strong summer not as strong as march april but it was definitely above average um, i would say an average price is, is a little bit below 100,000 isk for robotics so here we have the pullback where we sometimes reach the average then this massive jump up in march april again we are giving ground but there is still some upper pressure at the tail end here and so robotics still selling for 110,000 isk and the buyers at above 100,000 isk at 103 um, is still well above the average price for robotics normally so this is still a, a good time to try and, and and sell your robotics you're a bit late for the very high point of course uh, but it's still not a bad situation rocket fuel next that one is finally going back down um towards its previous average of like 12k um so this is quite interesting as well a completely different pattern too so a lot of them have this strong summer strong march april pattern here this weird median daily price all over the place very stable price at around 12,000 is for the first six seven months then here march april we move up a little bit and now at the tail end we're actually giving back that crown so 12,300 for the sellers probably a little bit above average 11,500 here for the Gita buyers 11,800 for the neighboring buyers that is probably uh, either still a bit above or on the average so here it looks to me like rocket fuel is going to start to come back into this pattern here of around 12k pretty soon self-harmonizing power course next i like to see this fall off right here at the tail end um, because at some point this summer i will be looking at all of these uh, structure related items to be ready for uh, a drilling platform uh, i still haven't exactly decided what and when i'm going to do 
uh, a move, maybe move into like a large uh, structure or something like that. Uh, so I, I will need to prepare for that. But I actually think that this summer we could see uh, the right time to jump on these as an investment as well. So self-harmonizing power core selling for 2.1 million bars or at 2 million right here. Um, so there is a decent amount of competition, but yeah, 2 million is, is definitely right here on the chart, pretty low on the bar side of things. So uh, it's starting to look interesting. I would like to be able to purchase them below 2 million. Then it becomes almost a no brainer. Uh, but this is definitely one of the thing, those uh, markets that I will keep a close eye on throughout the summer. Uh, maybe to invest in a large structure for myself because of the massive donation that I received. That is actually something that I would be willing to ri risk, lose and invest in. Uh, maybe in something else, uh, maybe just basically as, a, as an investment as well. We'll see how all of that works out. But yeah, it's nice to see the pressure right here. Um, this does create a bit of a buy opportunity if you're very hungry for it. Next up here, superconductors. That is uh, not that great. Um, so basically flat at the current price range, 12,000 for the sellers, 11,000 for the buyers. Probably actually it's average. Um, so here again, if you want to sell, go for the sell orders. You're probably still doing okay. But if you want to hold on, uh, I wouldn't blame you either. Test cultures next here after a little bit of a spike up, but this was probably an investment on being able to buy at 7,500. We're already moving back down, so this is still test cultures. Well, 9,300 for the sellers, 8,300 for the buyers is definitely above that average that triggered the investment spur right here, uh, but it's back under pressure still well below 10,000 ISK at the moment. So here it's definitely up to you to decide. I would say if you haven't done so yet, wait for sub 8,000 ISK buy orders, try to pick up some of that. I think that's the best way to play it. Uh, but uh, at the moment, yeah, test shelters actually pretty low, possibly a good investment if we look at these spikes up to 15K that happened twice in the last year. That's not so bad. And finally, here we have wetware mainframes, again, related to structures. You can see the slow burn down. If we go like this, you can see the pressure uh, 2.25 million, 2.3 million for the sellers, 2.2 million for the buyers. Again, I would like to see this a little bit lower. I think it could happen uh, throughout the summer, but um, this is something to keep an eye on, in my opinion, when it comes to investments for the winter expansion. Uh, so that was PI, quite interesting in my opinion. Let's move on to some tick one chips, 2720. Let's take a look at that. And um, here's the Abaddon. All right, so it, that, that one finally normalized a little bit. So I, I felt like this increase in price here at around May uh, may have been a response to the announced rebalancing of the tech three ships. Uh, because hopefully this could bring battleships a bit more into the meta and so we did pay a decent amount for the abaddon all of a sudden but we can see now that this is short-lived we're going back down on fresh supply 163 million for the sellers 156 million for the buyers this is definitely a pretty cheap abaddon at the moment and so we have to give that ground back so it is possible that now that the actual rebalance threads are going i haven't had the time to keep up with them i really should try to do that and uh, i'm actually pretty sorry uh, that i didn't because i think there could be really good information in there uh, about the tech tree cruiser rebalance that could help you uh, very nicely in the market but yeah just don't have the time for uh, for that at the moment still the abaddon basically going back down towards uh, the after ascension averages despite the nerfs to the uh, mining prices announced as well here's the caracal this one is basically moving sideways at the current trade range uh, below 10 million so 10 million for the sellers 9 million for the buyers most trades can easily happen between that those two prices Next up here, we've got the Covter, very same situation here, man, November is starting to <laughs> be quite at the, uh, yeah, past the, the, the midway mark of the chart here. And uh, again, before Ascension, um, 30 to 35 million, after Ascension, around 25 million for the Covter, 24 million, in fact, for the first few sellers, then it's 25, and 22.8 million for the buyers of Covters. So there is really no sign uh, of, uh, of, of any pullback or, or comeback in these tick one ships minerals are very cheap there are massive stocks out there and so people are still producing them uh, for a market that's just not in the meta all that much at the moment here's the hurricane again 
Uh, here is Ascension, 55, 50 to 55 million was definitely possible. Hurricane is currently selling for 46.6 million and the buyers are at 43.5 million. Maelstrom next. Uh, we, we here together with you, Baden, we had this little pull, pull up here. Uh, but uh, as you can see, we're back below 180 million. So 173.5 for the sellers, 160 million for the buyers, which seems to be, you know, 160 for the buyers of battleships, a little bit above that, depending on the type of battleship seems to be the current name of the game. Megatron here next again, uh, buyers 146.5 million, sellers 157 million. That's definitely a pretty cheap Megatron at the moment. I'm surprised there's actually a decent amount of them from the looks of it so like below 160 yeah that's actually a decent amount of them you could pick up a decent sized Megatron fleet for not too much isk at the moment wouldn't be surprised if that actually happened user prophecy shooting up on a nice investment that's uh, interesting um, I find this one quite interesting here all of a sudden um, there are two possible explanations. I personally think it's again most likely that we are trading these very cheaply right here. You can clearly see that we're playing with the one year lows with the previous trigger points as well. So I'm saying that's the most likely effect. Another thing could be that a prophecy fleet might make sense replacing tech tree ships or that that's the expectation. Uh, definitely a lot of buying happening here. 59 million for the sellers, 48 million for the buyers. Um, again, I think it's a trigger point because we can see that when we come close to 45 million on the median daily prices and if there's enough of them that someone comes in and, and buys a lot of them all of a sudden pushing up the price back towards this 55 million price range. So I think basically this happened twice before and happened here again. Could be that it has something to do with the tech tree rebalance as well. Scorpion next, uh, Kaldari battleship that is uh, definitely not very pricey. 145 million for the sellers, 136 million for the buyers. For a battleship, this is extremely cheap. You can also see that there's not just like a lack of demand. I mean, this is 1, 1, 1, 12, 20 here for 128.5. So you can basically disregard anything below that as very, very opportunistic. But they're actually coming close to that. And then the sellers are just not making Scorpions because it's uh, it's so dirt cheap at the moment. And finally, we have the Vexor charts going down in price a little bit at the tail end, but basically sideways around 10 million again. 10 million, just like the Caracal for the sellers, 9.4 million for the buyers, a little bit more expensive than the, uh, than the Caracal at the moment. So the take one market, uh, not too hot at the moment. And um, here and there, maybe the tech tree rebalance could have an impact on some of these ships. But at the moment, I think it's basically the mineral market that's dominating uh, the tech one prices and that the general feel is still of pretty low demand when it comes to these ships. Tech two next, uh, 32.45. I'm actually making good time on this one compared to last week. Let's get started. Here is the Aries. Ah, that's what I like to see. love to see that. Look at that. So you had buy opportunities here with plenty of oversupply at like less than 21 million currently selling for 29 million is 24.2 for the buyers as well awesome uh, to see volatility in the take two mark this is a great sell opportunity for you of course if you actually purchase some of those really cheap uh, areas you're making a nice little bit of money um, again don't go crazy on the volumes on these trades but it does show that there are opportunities in fact median daily prices went up to as high as 30 million is quite nice quite interesting awesome sell opportunity in the aries market here's the claw next um, i'm reading these as buy opportunities so close to 20 million on the chart we went up unfortunately selling for 24 million it's a little bit smaller than what i li would like to see 26 27 million would have been absolutely great but uh, I think that means I have one hour left. That should work. Uh, here again, you do see there is some volatility still here. We'd, we'd prefer to see these, of course, uh, but at the moment, okay. You can see the trigger as well. Uh, buy a sell price below 20 million. Try to pick up some cheap claws right there. I think I notified you guys that last week it looked quite interesting. And so you're making a little bit of money on this. If you're impatient, I would personally hold on to some of those cheap claws for later here's the crow going back down as well um is it in the interesting trigger that's a bit more tricky to say i think it's still a little bit early but buyers are at 22 million sellers 24 million i think it's still a little bit early go 
towards 21, maybe even below 21. That's when you should make your move on the crow, I think. Aries next, also slowly going down. So we had a, a nice sell opportunity. This was like a weird chart, 50 million. Then this sustained two month period of, of lower pr of price for less than 40 million. Then finally the pull back up and here at the moment, yeah, the Aries is difficult to read. 49 million for the sellers, 41 million for the buyers. That's also a decently wide margin. One and then four here is of course going to put pressure on the price. I would say, be patient enough with the Aries. Maybe look for buy opportunities below 40 million. Um, but uh, this one is a bit more risky, difficult to call because of the nature of the chart here. I much prefer the claw chart or what the Aries is doing, of course. Uh, Nick, uh, Aries, Aries. Man, difficult <laughs> between those two. Okay, moving on here to the flycatcher. Uh, I think that that was definitely okay as well from 50 to 75 million. That's not so bad. Currently on the downtrend here. Uh, but yeah, the trigger is definitely below 55 million. 56 million for the sellers, 61 for the buyers. Too early for the flycatcher, unfortunately. Here's the heretic. That is quite nice as well. I mean, this is definitely uh, a great sell opportunity right now. Heretics are selling for 62 million ISK, 53 million for the buyers. And you could have picked bought those i mean you had to time it right uh, if you did so in february for 45 million this is incredible money but here you probably had a buy opportunity at 50 million as well uh, not that long ago so very nice another sell opportunity here and another show of force in the volatility of the tech 2 market i like it uh, here is the hound next a little bit flat where we don't want to see it this is why we want to see of course currently well, still buyers below 20 million, uh, sellers at 21.2 million. I would dare to try and pick up one or two hounds if I have none of them lying around and, and you need to invest in the tech 2 market right now. Uh, otherwise, be patient, look for the 18 million mark. It's definitely possible if you look at this. Malediction next, taking off. That's uh, yeah, another interceptor taking off, quite interesting, towards 30 million. Currently, nobody's selling them, so Again, sell opportunity for the malediction. Uh, where were the buy opportunities at? A couple of months ago, 22.5, 22 million. So look for 22 million on the chart. Look to buy below that. And then that seems to be the right price for the malediction. And yeah, they're gone. This is your time to sell them if you did make that investment. Manticore. No, Manticore. Yes, next. All right, some volatility at least. So here, buy opportunities, 23 million. Sell opportunities go up to 28.4 million. That's not bad. And here again, quite a bit of volatility. So let's see what they're at. 25 million for the sellers, 23 million for the buyers. So still a little bit early to buy, I think. Um, this is 20, yeah, 23 million. Actually, yeah, could be quite interesting if this has enough momentum. Um, you're buying them for less than 23 million and the sell opportunities up to 28 million were definitely possible before. So I'm okay with this actually. It looks decently nice for volatility. Uh, if a war would break out now, this could be quite, uh, quite the right time to buy on those low points. Here's the nemesis. That unfortunately is not what we want to see at 22.5 million mark in between the low points and not really spiking high enough. 23 for the sellers, 20 for the buyers. Yeah, just no, not where we want to see it for either way. Purifier next, that one was probably playing with a decently low point last week. A little bit more tricky to tell that bottom, 20.6 million, 25.5 million. That's quite a nice margin. So again, uh, you could still try to pick those up on the buyers, but I would look for purifiers at less than 20 million personally and working apparently on an increase in price because, well, there's actually a decent amount being sold already. Next up here, we've got a Sabre. This again is not what we want to see. So decreasing volatility, decreasing bottom prices as well. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky. Less than 15 million for the buyers. Let's see where that is on the charts. That's actually okay. So you might want to risk it, but again, don't go crazy with the volumes. It's especially the frigates, the interceptors that seem to uh, show that volatility at the moment seem to be uh, quite in the interest of Nasdaq alliances. So take two market, very, very interesting. Um, I would say 
you know, of course, you can definitely be looking for selling on the Aries. But what I find most interesting are these sustained buy opportunities at like less than 20 million for an interceptor. That is personally where if you have the ISK, I would start to look like here, the crow, for instance. I would start to look for some of these investments and then hope for an actual Nalsic war to break out somewhere. Uh, the major trigger, of course, this winter could be when the outposts become citadels that can be destroyed. That could actually become quite interesting uh, if some of the bigger groups, groups uh, all of a sudden feel the need to start some sort of a scorched earth campaign. That's when they can definitely do that. Um, and thus right now those buy opportunities might become really great investments towards the winter again. And take two ships. So far, really doesn't look like any of those wars are going to be with a different meta, different types of ships. So interceptors, stealth bombers, definitely at the forefront. Then it's going to be stuff like faction battleships and of course capitals and supers. That's where the Cold War is being waged at the moment uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to Nalsic warfare. So do with it what you want. But I think that at the moment um, it shows enough volatility that I think if you Keep a close eye on it and you try to buy at the right time. You could uh, sit on some very nice investments for when a, a war does actually happen. And I, I think for this winter especially, uh, maybe before that even, uh, when people want to own these types of citadels, we could be in for some Nalsic action later on. Next up, the Tech Tree market, 41 minutes. 4100. So let's start with the destroyers. Uh, here is the Hecate. Um, again, we had this oversupply situation at 30 million, but we have this increase in price here all of a sudden. 32.5 million for the sellers, 30.5 for the buyers. It's definitely not high enough as an investment just yet, but at least there is some movement as well. Uh, oop, we actually should have started with the confessor. That's not great, of course. Flat at 30 million. So 30 million for the sellers. Still a couple hundred to go. Um, you know, if you want to buy some cheap confessors, it's the right time to do so. But it remains pretty risky because, of course, who knows what the rebalance is going to do to the market here. The Jack Doll next. Also up just a fraction in price, but not by much. Sellers are at 32 million and then 30 yeah actually going up quite fast towards 35 million but the buyers are sticking to less than 30 million and finally we have the zvepel as well that's just flat at 30 million i'm sure yeah 30 million for the sellers 28 million for the buyers so this is still oversupplied like crazy uh, again if you want to invest in these i don't think it's necessarily a bad idea it remains a bit of a of a gamble because of the nerf bats currently swinging pretty close to these ships uh, but if a war breaks out then this could be uh, a good investment to do uh, right now because a lot of these are massively oversupplied 30 million for these ships is actually decently cheap next up we've got the cruisers let's take a look at that here is the legion yeah it's just basically one year lows 120 for the sellers 150 million for the buyers of legions uh, basically a little bit of a pullback after going down to 110 million but it's still very cheap so some investments here as well that's quite interesting you do have um, a pretty big volume spikes here causing the the jump up in price at the very low point of 110 million so some investors did decide to make their moves here Next up here, we've got the Loki. That's going to be the same, of course. Announcement of dual tanking bonuses, both shield and armor tanked. Means that a lot of people did jump on the opportunity to buy some cheap Lokis. Quite interesting. Proteus Snake, it, it happened, right? All right, the rebalancing threats actually caused some people to make their investments in the Tech Tree ships. Um, the Tenku is the one that's left behind. <laughs> oh my God. There is some volume increase, but the price increase just isn't there. So I suspect that Tenku was just so massively oversupplied that uh, people could buy them to their heart's content and didn't even move the price. For some of the other ones, it was a uh, little bit of a jump up, but it's still definitely a very cheap price at the moment. 124 million for a Proteus is definitely not a lot. And then the Loki is the one winner. This is pros probably substantial like 110 million uh to well it's actually also still 120 some people are coming back already trying to sell some of these so this is going to be pretty short-lived uh, but some people made their tick tree cruiser investments pretty important information as well for uh, for the people that might be interested in that you're probably a little bit late to take those really cheap positions that was last week 
And for the extra product this week, let's go 45.30, uh, 44.30. Um, so I went through all of this a little bit more quickly. I'm going to touch on the mining drones. I want to see what those are doing uh, because this is, to me, um, I do think that CCP is doing their best. There were a lot of calls to bring the um, to bring the Rorcal in in line with its cost, but it turns out that that's been a bit of a mistake because making one Rorcal able to mine the same as eight hulks was obviously. A really big problem and this is the one thing that I did see as a problem with it is that I was expecting the meta to change completely uh, a lot of the big alliances have deep enough pockets that they can switch completely to full war call fleets and that's exactly what happened crashing down the market and apparently threatening it as well if CCP looks at, uh, at things so let's go for these faction drones here here is the augmented ice harvesting drone currently selling for 114 million bars or at less than 100 million this is actually decently uh, affordable for the best mining drone ice mining drone uh, outside of the Rorcal drones of course so here's the augmented mining drone this is the one that i'm using uh, you can see here again the introduction going down in price currently pretty stable at around 47 million for the sellers 43 million for the buyers again that does mean 200 million a bit more than that uh, let's say 250 in drones just to get the best yield on your orca i personally think it's worth it um, because i've not really seen that many people try to blow these up then here are the excavators ice mining drones do the announcements change this market drastically you get a bit of a pullback at the tail end these are still selling for 1.1 billion isk 1 billion for the first buyers coming in as well um, so they've actually gone up in price here in the last few months and i don't think the trend is changing right now and then we've got the excavator mining drones very similar pattern here as well so basically these are very expensive you do have some dumping happening here with the announcement of the changes so slight dig down in price but still 1 billion for the sellers 900 mil for the buyers very expensive mining drones and here are the harvester mining drones not sure how these those work exactly they're at half a billion and what do they do what are the attributes of these mining amount 42 are these actually better uh 10 megabits and uh, compared to these let's take a look here 37 5 megabits so these are actually medium mining drones not sure what the meta is for these harvester mining drones who use those not exactly sure but okay uh these exist as well didn't even know that so um, at the moment of course i think the market that could be slightly interesting is of course the excavator mining drones a lot of people are calling and i think not entirely wrongly uh, for these to go down in price make these a bit more available when it comes to the materials because of course if you keep continuously nerfing these drones that are extremely expensive uh, that is, is not really great to attract new people into uh, that um, into that profession itself so uh, this is a bit of a problem and this is basically the test that CCP uh, is, is going through it's crucible at the moment it's what did we do with the raw call how are we going to fix that and I have to be honest um, when it comes to this I, I sort of saw this coming um, and so these nerfs are expected uh, at some point this was going to happen inevitably uh, when you see what uh, what the goons are currently mining in their pocket of space uh, is CCP doing the right thing I think so I think that they're trying to basically save the economy here from that massive uh, new way of creating product in the game uh, but it should just basically never have come to this I, I personally feel that it should have done something completely different when it comes to the Oracle. the major problem that I'm seeing with these excavator drones the Oracle and things like that is that uh, they've made this very expensive ship granted uh, the very best in yield as well and um, it does so in probably the most passive way that you can play EVE Online which is mining and it, it is very attractive of course to mine passively it's, it's an aspect that I enjoy but it should never become like the best money maker in the game so they should have never made Rorcal uh, 
uh, that good uh, as, as the best chip and being able to run these uh, ore sites in such a passive way as well. So in my opinion, uh, if you would have, if you would ask me, how would you have fixed the roar call situation? Then what, what would you have done differently? This is hindsight 2020. I gotta be honest as well. Uh, it's not like I was completely outspoken on uh, the roar call changes, although I was worried by making it that powerful. Um, but hindsight 2020, what I would have done, to be honest, is uh, maybe even with that massive yield of the very first start, you should have made sure that they became very active ships, like uh, a carrier ratting or something like that. So using these excavator drones basically should have maybe triggered rats to keep coming in waves, waves, waves that constantly uh, increase in size, forcing you to not just go for max yield and put your Orcal down there, but actually play that game as well. It, it would give you bounties too, but you'd have to decide, do I put more defenses on that, lowering the yield a little bit, but being able to maintain my position in this belt more and more. Uh, but yeah, the use of these excavator drones, uh, the, the lore behind this was that they are basically some weird illicit tech that, that was uh, taken from uh, studying the rogue drones so i would you know if you'd ask me how do you fix the orcal i would say still you, you can give it the best yield but using these excavated drones triggers waves of rogue drones that come in and keep coming in and, and will eventually force you out of the belt after a certain amount of time and uh, you can fit for more tank more defensive abilities also use your defenses to uh, to fight off those waves which or to also bring you in some bounties or you can fix uh, fit for max yield but then you're just not going to be able to stay in that belt for all that long because the rogue drones are going to chase you out because you're using these excavators and if you want that passive um, roar call mining you can do that with the regular tech 2 uh, or, or, or augmented mining drones and then you're in line with an orca basically if you want that full passive um, um, experience and so that is i think how i would uh, how i would uh, try to fix this make the very best yield the excavators uh, trigger something in game so that you cannot do this as passively as mining with the other drones or mining in a barge that is i think uh, what uh, what could help uh, the recall um, and what could help balance things out with the economy as well and there you go guys that's a little bit of talk on my views on the recall i don't think i'm going to make a separate video on this i don't use a recall myself so uh, there's probably a lot of complaints that i don't fully understand that are actually very uh, correct from the players as well and so uh, as a result here that's all i'm going to say about that topic while we look a little bit at these uh, at these drones but all of these have basically um, uh, stabilized quite nicely at their current trade range and uh, some of these excavator drones took a bit of a dip on increased supply after the announced changes as probably some roar call pi uh, pilots decided to hang up their codes that's going to be it for this week guys thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all next time